Before we start, I want you to memorize the order in which these are written because it will help you to remember the steps to take when you change these from one to another. Look at this number again and tell me what it is. Well, that's easy. We just said a minute ago it was the fraction one-fourth. Yes, I did. But first let me ask you what this word is. Well, that's record. No, isn't that record? Okay, which is it? Well, now that I think about it, I guess it could be both. That's right. The word has two different meanings. It could be the noun, record, or the verb, record. So it has two distinct different meanings depending on the context you're using it in. Now let's look at this object again. It actually has at least four different definitions. It could be interpreted as a fraction one-fourth, or it could be interpreted as a ratio one to four, or it could be interpreted as a probability one chance out of four chances of something occurring. Or it could be interpreted as a division problem, one divided by four. Let's say I want to change this fraction into a decimal. That means I have to do some work, some arithmetic operation. So that means I have to interpret this as a division problem, one divided by four. You write the division house alongside the bottom and imagine tilting the fraction so that the top number slides off into the division house. That way you'll always remember which number goes outside the division house and which one goes inside. It will never be the other way around. The next step is that when you're dividing a larger number into a smaller number, you have to write the smaller number as a decimal number and place some zeros behind the decimal point. We'll use two zeros for our examples. You could use more or less if you wanted to, and sometimes you will need more, other times you won't. Now place your decimal point in your answer directly above the decimal point in your problem and perform regular division. Four divides into ten at most two times with a remainder of two. Bring down your zero and perform your next division. Four divides into twenty exactly five times with no remainder. As you can see, I've just turned the fraction one-fourth into the decimal twenty-five hundredths. Now let's change three quarters and one half. To change three quarters into a decimal, we must divide four into three. Again, write the three as a decimal number and carry it out to two places. Then place a decimal point in the answer directly above the decimal point in your problem and start dividing. Four divides into thirty at most seven times with a remainder of two. Bring down the remaining zero and perform the next division. Four divides into twenty exactly five times with no remainder. We've just turned the fraction three quarters into the decimal number seventy-five hundredths. Now for the fraction one half. You're going to divide two into one. Write one as a decimal number. Place two zeros behind the decimal point and place the decimal point in your answer. Now two divides into ten exactly five times with no remainder. As you can see, we've changed a fraction one half into the decimal five tenths. These are the steps you perform anytime you want to change a fraction into a decimal. Now what if we want to go a step further and change these decimals into percents? Here's where remembering this order will help you. You probably vaguely remember something about moving a decimal point in some direction some number of places when changing decimals to percents and percents back to decimals. The trouble was remembering which direction and how many places. Yes, I vaguely remember something about that. Me too, Mr. Slay! Okay, let's look at our board again. You'll notice that if we're moving from decimals to percents, we're moving to the right. So if we want to change 25 hundredths to a percent, we move the decimal two places to the right and attach a percent symbol. It will always be two places either to the right or to the left, depending on which direction you're going. Now when our decimal point winds up at the end of a whole number, you can drop it. So as you can see, the fraction one-fourth can be written as a decimal 25 hundredths, which can then be written as a percent 25 percent. What this means is that fraction, decimal, and percent numbers are actually just three different ways to write the same thing. So how would you change 75 hundredths to a percent? Irving? Well that's easy. You move the decimal two places to the right and attach a percent symbol. And you can drop the decimal point when you're finished because it's at the end of a whole number. How about five tenths? Well I'm guessing that you'd have to add a zero to the five tenths in order to move the decimal point two places to the right. Then you attach a percent symbol and drop the decimal point because it's at the end of a whole number. Now let's look at fractional percent numbers and decimal percent numbers. 